everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a little heat embossing, some stamping, and top it off with some ink blending to create this really pretty snowy village scene. One of the main stamp sets that I'll be using today is Winter Whimsy from Gina K Designs. This is currently in the Winter Whimsy card kit. And I really loved these houses and these trees. There are also some skinny sentiments on here and some sweater patterns, which I'll be using at a later date. I'm going to start by first heat embossing this little strip of houses. So I have a piece of layering white cardstock and I'm going to line these houses up in about the middle of the card. Once that I feel that it is straight and I apologize, my head keeps getting in there, but I wanted to make sure it's straight. I'm going to pick it up with the door of my Misty. I'm going to use this cottontail embossing powder tool from the Rabbit Hole Designs to prep my cardstock for some heat embossing. Then I will use the Gina K Designs embossing ink, ink up my image, and stamp this down really well onto my background. Next, I'm going to sprinkle on some clear embossing powder, and that clear embossing powder is going to trap the white of the cardstock underneath. You could also use some white embossing powder, but I really like using clear embossing powder because then I can ensure I'm getting a beautiful white crisp image behind my scene. So after I sprinkle on that embossing powder, I'll tap off any of the excess and then have my heat tool warming up off on the side and bring that over to melt the embossing powder. I'm going to then work on my ink blending once this has cooled off and I'm going to be starting with the turquoise C. Now I have my inks set here in the rectangle ink stand from the ink stand. I really do like having these on my desk because for one, it keeps my ink pad and my lid in a secure spot. I'm not getting ink all over the place. I do not have to touch my ink pad to hold it when I want to pick up ink with my blending brush, which reduces the risk of me getting inky fingerprints on my white cardstock. So I started with that turquoise C lightly going over the houses and just above them a little bit. Then I'm going to bring in Tranquil Teal and add that right above my turquoise C, kind of blending into the two. Once I have that on, I'm going to bring in Plum Punch to really step up the contrast of this background. I'm going to blend that into the Tranquil Teal, and then I'm going to go back and forth between my colors to help that transition of color. I love using Gina K Designs Layering White cardstock because it is such a super smooth cardstock that it's great for ink blending. So once I give this background a few minutes to dry, it's gonna smooth out those colors and I'm gonna wipe off any of the excess ink that my heat embossing resisted. Before I do anything to this background, I am going to die cut it out with the Master Layouts to die. One of the reasons I'm doing this first before I add any splatters of anything is then I'm not risking getting any of those splatters in my die cut machine or on my die cutting plates. So I like to try and die cut it out first. Now I have a scrap piece of white cardstock that I'm die cutting a snowy hill from. This comes from the Master Layouts 6 die set. So I trimmed that out and I'm also going to trim that hill out with the Master Layouts 2 so that it matches the size of my base or my cardstock panel and also matches those beveled edges. Now I'm going to bring in these beautiful trees from that Winter Whimsy stamp set. And I lined that up over the top of my houses. I tried to make sure that the tree trunks weren't right over an open space of those windows. I'm okay with the branches showing, but I didn't want the tree trunks to show in the window. Then I can ink this up and stamp it in Stormy Sky ink. So it's kind of a dark gray. If you wanted a little more contrast, you could stamp it again in the Stormy Sky because it does kind of dry back a little bit or you could stamp them in the black, but I really liked the stormy sky. And then I just wiped away any of that excess ink that was stamped over those heat embossed images. Now that I have kind of my little snowy town here, I can add my splatters. So Gina's inks actually do react with water. So I just put a couple drops of water on my work surface, picked it up with a paintbrush and splattered that all over the background. Now I'm gonna bring in this Copic Opaque white ink I put a little bit down on my mat, added a little bit of water, and flicked that on my background. So we have a very snowy scene here. It's going over the tops of the trees, and that heat embossing will resist it, so I'll, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to let it dry on top of that. 
I have a piece of heavyweight cardstock that I'm going to use for my card base. This is cut to five and a half by eight and a half, and just using my scoreboard to score that at a four and a quarter. Then I can fold it in half, and I'll just reinforce that fold with my bone folder. Now one last thing I need to do is add a sentiment to the front of my panel before I glue anything together. So on top of my little snowy hill, I am going to stamp a sentiment from Sentimental Holiday Stamp Set. This is a really great stamp set if you're looking for stamping in the inside of your card. So I have Happy Holidays. You could put the From Our Family to Yours on the inside of your card, but I love having all of my sentiments on the front. Now a great trick that I often forget about is using my Misty tool to help line up my panel. So I have my folded card base here that I put in the corner of my Misty. I have a piece of Easy C tape that I'm just folding in half into a little loop and placing that in the inside of my card base so it keeps my card front shut. Then I can layer up the blended panel with about three pieces of white cardstock that's cut to the same size. That's just adding dimension to this. And then I lined it with a tape runner and I'm adding it to the front of the card. This really helps me make sure that I have even margins on each side. It's keeping my card base in place. Then I can finish it off by adding tape runner behind my snowy hill and attaching that to the front of my ink blended panel. So even though there's a few steps to create this card, I think it's a great design to use if you wanted to mass produce cards. You could do an assembly line of all your heat embossing, all your stamping, and all your ink blending if you were looking to do this to send out multiples. I hope you enjoyed today's video and it has given you some inspiration in your holiday card making this season. All of the supplies used in today's video will be listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for joining me today, and here are a few other videos I think you may enjoy.